Hello, hi, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather Corinne, and today we're gonna be crocheting this adorable watermelon garland. This is a perfect, quick and easy summer crochet project. I'll post a list of materials and stitches we'll be using in the description box below, as well as a link to my blog post where I've typed this pattern out for you. So let's get started on this fun project. We'll begin with our pink yarn by creating a slip knot for our hook. And we're going to chain 19 chain stitches. So here are our 19 chain stitches. For row one, we're gonna single crochet in each stitch across. So that's gonna be a total of 18 stitches. So just putting one single crochet in each stitch all the way across. And at the end of each row, we're gonna chain one and turn the work around. For rows two through four, we're just gonna repeat row one. We're gonna single crochet in each stitch across. So we're going to keep single crocheting each stitch until we reach the end of row four. For row five, we're gonna single crochet decrease. So that's pull up a loop through this first stitch, pull up a loop through the second stitch, and then pull through all three loops. Then we're gonna single crochet in the next 14 stitches. and then single crochet decrease on those last two stitches. And that'll be a total of 16 stitches for row five. Row six, we're gonna single crochet in each stitch across. So that's gonna be a total of 16 stitches for row six. Row seven, we're gonna single crochet decrease. And then single crochet in the next 12 stitches. And then single crochet decrease again for a total of 14 stitches for row seven. Row eight, we're gonna single crochet decrease, and then single crochet in the next 10 stitches. single crochet decrease again for a total of 12 stitches for row eight. For row nine, we're gonna single crochet decrease and then single crochet in the next eight stitches.
and then we'll single crochet decrease again for a total of 10 stitches for row 9. For row 10, we're going to single crochet decrease and then single crochet in the next 6 stitches. single crochet decrease one more time for a total of eight stitches for row 10. Row 11, we're going to single crochet decrease and then single crochet in the next four stitches. And then single crochet decrease these last two. And after our chain one stitch, we're going to tie off with a long enough tail to weave in our ends. So now we have the base of our watermelon. We're going to take our handy dandy tapestry needle and weave in these loose ends to get those out of the way. I'll show you my favorite method for weaving in ends. First, we'll get the end into a manageable place. We'll weave it up to the next row. And then I'm going to run it through maybe four or five stitches in one direction. Skip one stitch and run it through those same stitches in the other direction. And then I'll trim off that excess yarn. And then we'll do the same thing with the other end. Next, we'll move on to the watermelon rind. We'll get our green yarn and create a slip knot for our hook, leaving a long enough end at the beginning to weave in that end when we're finished. And so we're going to begin on this top left corner of our watermelon. So if you're looking directly at it, it says top left corner. We're going to insert the hook into that top stitch and we're going to single crochet. And all we're going to do to create this border is continue single crocheting all the way around this outside edge until we get to the top right corner of the watermelon. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Your support allows me to continue creating these free tutorials for you, so I really, really appreciate it. Here we are at this top right corner, finishing up our border. After this last stitch, we're gonna chain one and tie off with a long enough tail to weave in that end. So next we'll weave in these green ends really quickly. And the only thing left for our watermelon is the seeds. So we'll just get some black yarn and snip off a piece, string it onto our tapestry needle. And 
and I'm going to place three seeds across the top. So I'm going to start in this top left corner and I'm only going to do one little pass through and then I'm going to repeat it three times through the same stitch to create one seed. So I'll show you again on this next one, we're just going to move over to the center across the back. So we're going to go through one time, up through the back, down through the back, and we'll repeat this two more times through the same stitches. So here's number two and number three and that just makes the seed look a little full and rounded and that's the second seed so we're going to move on to the third one and then i'm going to place two in between the three on the top a couple rows down below i didn't count the rows or anything i just kind of eyeballed it to see what looked best Once we're done with all these little seeds, we're going to turn it around and tie off on the back side. And that completes our little watermelon. How cute are these guys? Now all we have to do is string them onto our garland. So I'll link this jute that I like on Amazon down below. I just snip off a piece and string it onto the same tapestry needle. And then on the back side of the watermelon, I like to run it through two stitches. So one stitch on this side and then one stitch on the other side. And this lets the watermelon hang straight without seeing the jute on the front side of it. So we'll just continue to string the rest of these little pieces on and that will complete our garland. Here is our finished product. I hope you had fun creating with me today. If you did, leave me a comment and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you very soon.